those. Apparently, they do, and they make it for the globalists, and they call them clean vaccines. Well, yeah, yes. I want the clean vaccines. I don't want the vaccines filled with hormones and antibiotics and GMO contaminants. I totally agree, Anthony. And and on top of that, they also make them out of aborted baby cells. They call them diploid cells. And that's in a list. That's in several vaccines that they want to push on you, your pregnant wife, your kids. So if you want to be a party to all this, that's your business. But we're going to put the information out there. Starting in the fourth hour, we're just going to go nonstop. I want to take as many calls as I can. I want you to have your stories ready. And we're going to put this out as one piece, a message to the globalist and vaccine pushers. Because we're not just going to stand by while there's rooms of little girls. Uh, you know, yesterday we showed that video. And I, I thought it was from Mexico because it was a Mexican Facebook page. It was actually little girls in a coastal town of Colombia that are writhing on the floor after getting this shot, this HPV shot, and they're all having seizures. But they're saying, don't worry. Once the seizure passes, they're fine. Well, you and know, you, you really think about believe it also, that. Also, Rob, it ties in with this kind of, these headlines that we see. I mean, how are we supposed to trust the government with this type of operation? Here's the headline. Feds want evidence they let Mexican drug cartels buy guns kept quiet. Quote, the defendants should be precluded from mentioning, mentioning Operation Fast and Furious. This is from Sputnik on Infowars.com. Prosecutors in the trial of a murdered U.S. Border Patrol agent are trying to keep details about guns found on the murder scene from the jury because of their connection to a scandal-ridden federal program. Between 2006 and 2011, Arizona Field Office of the United States Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, ATF, used a tactic known as gun walking in a secretive program known as Operation Fast and Furious. We all know about that. Mm -hmm. During that time period, the ATF purposefully allowed licensed firearms dealers in Phoenix and Tucson to sell weapons to illegal straw buyers with the hope of later tracking them to Mexican drug cartels. Oh, yeah, they wanted to help you, right? That's not allowed to be talked about. Please don't let them know that we helped Mexican drug cartels. But then at the same time, trust us on everything else we do. Exactly. Trust us. It's exactly. all safe, guys. Sure, we do this, but don't talk about that. You know, sure, the FDA approves every single horrible thing in our food supply, but vaccines don't have anything bad in them. And again, I've evolved my knowledge on this. I think we all have understanding that it's about the clean vaccines. And you're going to cover that in the fourth hour, so I want to get into some other news. Sure. I want to take some calls. First, here's some more stories on Yahoo. White House monitoring reports Russian military is in Syria. That's a whole nother. I mean, we can't. Me, as we talk about, you know, Farrakhan meeting with Eminem and he's telling to kill people and everything like this and all these, these people on Twitter saying to kill all white people, Russia moves in, right? I mean, as the, all this happens, cops give woman back her stolen car filled with guns and drugs twice. Quote, at this point, I can't tell if it's real or fake, but all I know is my hands have been on too many illegal things. Man arrested for mocking mayor on Twitter wins big in a lawsuit. Hillary Clinton's email, the definitive timeline, this is all on Infowars.com. Migrant smuggling in Europe is now worth billions. We talked about that earlier. It's a huge industry. You want to make some money, start smuggling some illegal immigrants. Refugees threaten Europe's Christian roots, say Hungary's Orban. It's all madness. But we got to trust the government because they help us and they are loving. Truth of the matter is, people are waking up. We're going to take some more of your calls on waking up when we get back. And then Rob is going to take over for the fourth hour. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. we got more videos ahead, more news, more awesome information. Stay tuned. Thank you for joining us. Kit Daniels just brought in some breaking news on Infowars.com. This is The Alex Jones Show, and I'm sitting in for Alex. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and I want to read this headline for you right now. Trump, evidence suggests Obama protecting ISIS. Subheadline, Trump is closer to the truth than he realizes, according to Pentagon. This is on Infowars.com right now, just released. The fact that the Obama administration is leaving known ISIS training camps alone suggests the White House is protecting the terrorist group, according to presidential candidate Donald Trump. This is a big statement from Donald Trump. He says, well, you would knock the hell out of the training camps. That's one's a given, and it's incredible we don't since we know... He, okay, this is a Michael Savage show. He says, it's almost like we are protecting these people. So he is obviously saying Obama is protecting ISIS by not targeting their camps. This is on Infowars.com right now. We have another paragraph. Trump is closer than the truth to the truth, and he realizes a secret U.S. government document obtained by Judicial Watch reveals the U.S. and other NATO nations deliberately backed al-Qaeda in Iraq 
which morphed into ISIS and other Islamic extremist groups to overthrow Syrian President Bashir al-Assad. Well, of course, U.S.-backed Syrian rebels that chopped off the heads of Christians by the dozens in central towns. They would just round them all up and chop their heads off, screaming Allah Akbar. And that's what we paid for. We would give them rocket launchers and Reuters covered in 2011 that Obama was supporting all of this and supporting Syrian rebels going around, blowing towns up and killing everybody. That's the kind of stuff we support here in the United States of America. Rob, I mean, we talk about this a lot, but I mean, what do you think about Trump? He's now saying that Obama's protecting ISIS. This is some hard-hitting stuff. It is, and you really got to hand it to him. Um, because he's not controlled by a bunch of outside interest, he can say things that other candidates aren't going to touch. Um, I, I kind of, I think the signing the uh, loyalty pledge is a double-edged sword where they can now really go after Trump and and put the hammer down on him and and get him out of the race, which is what I think the Republicans are are planning on doing um, by by him using that signing that loyalty pledge. They're going to say, hey, now we don't want you in here, and you're not going to run third party. And so now they've got him in in a, a vice grip essentially. Unless he wins, he's out, so he can't really influence the uh, election after that. But you got to hand it to him. He is saying some really good things, some things that need to be said. And it's great that, you know, the mainstream media is unwillingly giving him that platform to put out these ideas that the American people already know and already want. The they, the reason he's so popular in the polls is because they want to hear stuff like this. They want to hear this type of rhetoric. They want to hear these types of attacks going on with the establishment. You know, he might just be a genius in the way that he positioned himself, even if he doesn't win. The way he positioned himself with all of the early, you know, scandals and stuff that really no one cared about, but the media started picking him up and became like a TMZ type issue. Mm -hmm. Now he can insert real things in there. Right. Like he can insert that Obama is protecting ISIS amid all of this crazy TMZ stuff. Like, oh, Donald Trump seen in limousine with, you know, girls or whatever. Now he can just be like, oh, by the way, Obama's supporting ISIS and backs the Syrian rebels, which behead Christians in central squares in the Middle East and bomb cities and destroy relics, we gave them the missile launchers. We gave them the AKs. We gave them the Jeeps. We gave them all of their funding. He right. can support and push that in there in a super genius kind of like media ops level operation where he can start putting in truthful information. Well, and the mainstream media knows that, oh, Trump gets ratings. So we're going to talk about Trump. Whatever he says, we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. And they don't even realize that they're putting out our information essentially out to a giant audience, uh, well, a dwindling audience now, but a giant audience if you take all the mainstream media outlets out there that are all posting on Trump and talking about him and keeping it going. So I think it's a good thing that this is getting out there. Whether Trump succeeds or fails, we'll see. I'm still predicting a Jeb Hillary um, runoff. We shall election. definitely see. And Rob, coming up, the fourth hour available at Infowars.com forward slash show. If the radio station you're listening to does not carry it, is coming up. I'm going to sit five minutes over with you to 205. It is coming up in the next segment, and I think we're going to talk about a few things, Trump and beyond, and vaccines. Totalitarianism comes in many different flavors throughout history. It can come from the right wing, the left wing. It can come from religious cults. It can come from a foreign invading army. And in the modern 21st century, it's basically coming from political correctness masquerading as the Renaissance, masquerading as liberalism, it seeks to shut down free speech. And the controlled globalist left has willing accomplices in the Republican Party and other conservative and libertarian organizations and groups throughout the world. The robber barons that control this planet are not free market. They are monopoly men who seek to have systems free of competition controlled by offshore combines above the law. The main mission of Infowars.com and my 20 years on air is to shatter the left-right paradigm and to get the public to become aware of what's really governing and controlling society on a mass scale. Bottom line, we have reached that legendary, colossal moment in history where the next thousand years of human development, our very destiny is being decided. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015, 
the first money bomb I've done in three years because we only do these if they're critical to be able to build up our infrastructure. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on UHF, VHF, and cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. Starting September 16th through the 17th, we're going to broadcast live from 11 a.m. on the 16th through 2 p.m. on the 17th for 27 hours with an amazing lineup of guests, investigative journalists, documentary films, and more. We are seeking to raise a million dollars so that we can reach 400 million extra people potentially in the next year. Because if you do the math, and if you look at the numbers that we're already getting from affiliates and from the internet and from YouTube and from Facebook and all the platforms, we are reaching 20 million people a week. If you put all that together over a year, that's upwards of 200 million different individuals around the world is how the algorithm metrics come out. So I simply want to double that in the next 12 months after launching this money bomb. Just the satellites, the closed captioning under federal law and other regulations will cost us right at $39,000 a month, which if you add it together is over $400,000 a year alone. When you talk about cameras, crew, studio, million dollars is only a portion of what we need to do this but it's an important part to ensure with the collapsing economy and the hard times we're going into that we have the funds it takes to keep this beacon of truth exposing globalism and dehumanization operating so join us this september 16th and 17th for what I believe will be the final money bomb that InfoWars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awakening. Because as Mahatma Gandhi famously said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. We are in that process of being massively attacked and in the face, we're charging up, getting ready and going in. Go to infowars.com forward slash money bomb for all the information. And in closing, I want to say this to all of you patriots out there across the globe that have spread the word about our operation and that have supported us. History is happening right now. The destiny of humanity is being decided right now. And Infowars, which you, the viewers and listeners and activists stand at the heart of, is the engine that has made all this possible. You're not standing behind the info war. You are standing at the center of it. You are right beside us in this fight. And I guarantee you, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Sam Adams would be incredibly proud of what you've done in defense of human freedom, in defense of true liberty. So from myself, Alex Jones, and the entire InfoWars crew, we salute you. Join us this September 16th and 17th for the 27-hour Money Bomb in defense of human liberty. That's right. We are still live. It is the fourth hour of Overdrive of The Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Rob Dew, sitting in. And it is my pleasure to be here today because I really want to send a message to the globalists, to Big Pharma, to all the vaccine pushers out there. If people get this video out, we're going to put this up by itself, this last hour of people with their vaccine side effects stories. We're going to put it out. We're going to let people know this is happening. When they say they're safe and effective, they're lying to you. And I'm going to prove it in more ways than one. I also have some articles here that I'm going to go through. But let's go ahead and let's take our first caller here. This is Matthew calling from Florida. Matthew, what is your story? Hi there. Hi. Yeah, hi. I, uh, I have a uh, four-year-old son who was diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes back in uh August of 2013, and I noticed uh, some symptoms right after he had the hepatitis B vaccine. And uh, you know, I'm I'm still pretty frazzled. I live in Florida. We actually moved from San Francisco in 2012, 
And, uh, you know, I'm just at a loss. And, you know, he's in pre-K now, and I'm, you know, getting all sorts of pressure. I got a letter that was sent home saying that, uh, you know, if he wasn't up to date with his immunizations, that he's going to get 